it's very hard for people now to realize what the South looked like in 1965. The black community that I lived in, the family I lived with, that community was called Hogtown. And there, were no, there was no running water. We lived in sort of these shacks. They had a TV, but there was an outhouse. And when I once got locked in the bathroom at 4 a.m., and there were pigs outside, you could hear going, you know. It was very poor, very, very downtrodden. And the white, uh, you'd go to the white section of town, and there was the courthouse, the, the white columns going up, the sort of Greek, uh, Greek uh, columns of the very, you know, of the buildings, the signs, the segregation signs. At the end of my tour there, it was about six weeks I was there, I decided to go back to the place of my birth, which was Little Rock, Arkansas, and um, ended up staying with a family uh, that had uh, included the doctor who had delivered me. And um, I found myself almost unable to enter that white world suddenly. I started shaking. It was almost as if I was going into culture shock because I had lived in a world where whites were the enemy, where when you saw a police car coming by, you sort of disappeared. You went around the corner. You didn't want them to see you. You didn't want to make trouble. The whites were the enemy. The police were the enemy. The FBI generally were the enemy. And suddenly, after six weeks of this acculturation, I walk into a very upper-class, rich, white, southern family that was talking about those people at Berkeley those demonstrators. And I found myself go into shock, and I actually ended up leaving after a day because I started shaking. 